Did you know that in order to become an expert in anything, it just takes three easy steps? Well, in this video, I'll help you learn what those steps are and show you how to put them into action in the cloud, no matter what your current skill level is. Now, all my videos on the Azure Academy follow this simple three-step formula. First, understand the core concepts. Then figure out how to implement them at every scale. And finally, connect what you've learned together with the other solutions that you know. And let's use cloud networking as an example. Here's my global network spanning three regions, East US, UK South, and Japan East. And each region is set up with its own hub and spokes, and then the hubs are all interconnected, secured, and routable. And the code to build all this is up on my GitHub, linked in the description, so you can learn along with me without impacting your existing environments. Now, networking may seem really complicated, but it's actually very easy if you think of it like your neighborhood, with all of its houses and streets located near some stores down the road from all the other neighborhoods. And if you connect several neighborhoods together, you get a city. And cities need shared services like security, medical, and sanitation. That's just like scaling your single network up to a hub and spoke network. And if you combine multiple cities together, you get a country or a continent, and it's just one short jump from that country to all the other countries, and before you know it, you have a planet. And starting with your hub and spokes, you have some options to scale up or scale out. You can scale up with more hub and spokes in that same region or into other regions, and you can scale out into multiple subscriptions and even multiple clouds. So that all sounds like a lot. How is this possible? Well, you've already done the hard part, the planning. So when thinking about your planning, it all starts with the why. Why do you need anything more than just one network or one hub and spoke? Well, one reason could be security, like the users with their data in the US need to be kept separate from all those users in Asia. Or maybe you've grown past the limits for a single Azure subscription like these, and you need to push into new regions or new subscriptions to keep growing. And to do all this, the thing you really have to remember is that all your different address spaces across your networks need to be unique so that they can be peered together. And that brings up an obvious question, network topology. Do you want a single hub with multiple spokes or a hub in each region that'll keep your traffic regionally isolated and only allow traffic across hub to hub for specific purposes? And of course, you need to think about where is your on-prem if you need to use one, and how will you get there from all those different places? Will each hub connect to the on-prem on their own, or will they go back to a primary hub and go on-prem? Now, building a planet-sized network takes a lot more than just deploying some VNets. You need to set up connectivity, security, routing, and DNS, which does sound like a lot of work. Luckily for you, Azure has a great solution, the Virtual Network Manager. It makes managing things at the planet-sized network all the way down to a single hub and spoke really easy. You just pick your subscription and resource group and give it a name, and then you pick the region you wanna manage everything from. Then you can throw in a description if you like, and you have now some features to pick from. Connectivity will handle all the peering and topology, security admin, that's the rules for the network, and routing is a new preview feature, which is kind of self-explanatory, so I'll just pick them all. Click next, and since the manager is such a powerful tool, it needs a scope of what you want it to control. So click right here and add one. Now you could manage everything from the top root level all the way down, or you could just pick an individual subscription. However, none of your scopes can overlap. Two connectivity managers can't have control over the same subscription. And also, if you pick one of these management groups, it automatically selects the subscriptions under it, so you can't select them twice. Then just add all of your tags, which all experts do on their resources, and create. Inside your new network manager, you can create groups, configurations, and then deploy those configs out to your networks when you're ready. So let's make some groups. Now, since I have three different regions, I'll make one group for each region, and I'll use the virtual network as my member type. Although you could do this at the subnet level if you manage your applications by subnet, instead of by network. But I'll leave that up to you and just repeat for all of my other groups. And notice I also created a global group. More on that in a minute. 
Now we need to put our networks into the groups. So click on one of your groups and then click add. And you can filter by the name at the top, which is why a naming convention always comes in handy. And you can also change your group by to location, which makes selecting the networks in the region that you want really easy. Now notice here, I did not select the hub. Why would I do that? Patience, grasshopper. Click add. And then we've got all of our groups with their members. Now there is another way to add members to your group through Azure policy. Give your policy a name and then scroll down and add a parameter for something like location being Japan East. And you can add a name that does not contain hub. Then click the preview to make sure that's all the resources that you want, which looks good to me. Now as for this global group, I'm gonna add manually here all of my hub networks. And with that step complete, we're ready to connect. So check out the configuration side and then create a new connectivity config. Give it a name and a description. And on the topology tab, you can choose from a mesh which connects all networks to each other equally. And that could be good for simplified routing, but it also is kind of an open connection model which does have some security risk. So you can also choose from the hub and spoke. And in our case today, we're gonna use both. Now click here to add your group and pick your global group. And then you wanna check this box to enable mesh across regions. Then click next to visualize how your groups will connect, which will look more interesting in a minute, I promise. And then create the config. And now let's add another one. This time we'll give it a name and then select our hub and spoke option. And when you do, you get this new item where you need to pick your hub. That's why we couldn't include the hub in our regional groups. The connection to the hub needs to be separate from the group that it's connecting with. And you could also check this box to delete any existing peers, which is kind of cool because that means that you can use Virtual Network Manager on your current existing networks, regardless of how they're set up, and Network Manager will put them all in the right place. Click Next, and since there's more networks involved, you get a better visualization, and then go ahead and complete this config and set it up for all of the other regions. So that wraps up our planning phase. Now we need to do something with our configs, and that's deploy them. To do that, click up here and pick the right kind of config, and then select the specific config that you want to deploy, and it shows that we've got three different hub and spokes in one mesh, which means that the regions will be interconnected among themselves, and then the hubs will be meshed together, so all hubs will be equal. And then you need to pick your target regions to deploy this config. Now you could just select everywhere, but the VNet manager can only work with its groups. And all of our groups are just located in these three regions, and that's why they're recommended. Click next, and you get a nice summary of what you're about to deploy, and that just takes a minute to complete. Now, if you go and look at one of your hub networks and look at your VNet peerings, you've got peerings for this hub to all of its individual spokes. But we don't see that mesh connection anywhere. For that, you need to go to the VNet manager, and there's your mesh connection back to the hub. And now you've done it. You've really done it. You've got this gigantic global interconnected network and the attackers are all ready to start hacking like barbarians at the gate. Thankfully, Network Manager has the answer with a little bit of help. Now there are three basic ways to secure your network traffic in Azure. Network security groups, firewalls, and Network Manager's security admin rules. Now one of the main differences between them is the where and when they get applied. Security admin rules are enforced before any other rules. And that can be a double-edged sword. So the expert way to use them is to control traffic at the highest levels in and out of your network. Then you use the firewalls inside the hub and spokes and between the different hubs to control everything. And then you use your NSGs at the individual subnet levels and then you can do micro segmentation, which is a good zero trust practice at the specific network card of each VM level. So your admin rules can be really powerful. So save them for the highest priorities of traffic. For example, if you wanna block RDP and SSH coming in from the internet, once you do that here, nobody anywhere can write any rule that's gonna override you. So here in your network manager, in your configs, let's create a new security admin config given a name and a description. And in the deployment options here, we've got a few choices. This option will actually skip any of the deny rules in the environment, which I don't want. 
And in the bottom section, you have the ability to actually aggregate all the different CIDR ranges from your NSGs into the rules. But that's kind of cool because every time you get that updated, then this will get updated with it. And on the next tab, you can create a rule collection and that's where the rules get stored, just like in the Azure Firewall. And that's gonna need a name and then you pick your target group. Now you could just pick one or multiple, that's up to you and your rule. And then click here to add a rule and this looks pretty much like the firewall or NSG format, so you should be familiar with it. It needs a name and a description, the priority, the action that will be taken, the direction, the protocol, and then your source destination with their ports. And I'm allowing here port 53 from anywhere through my global groups. And the one thing to pay attention of here is the action. Now, of course, you know, allow or deny. But we have this new one here, which is always allow. And that's gonna override the other traffic rules all the way down to the NSGs. And then I've added a few more for DNS, both on TCP and UDP in both directions. Then back in the manager, go to deployments, pick your security one, select your admin rule that you wanna deploy, click your regions just like before, and then deploy. With that done, you can jump back to your virtual network. You can go to the network manager at the security tab and them's the rules. So now that we've allowed DNS to flow on port 53, we have a problem. We don't have anywhere to send it without any DNS servers. Well, to do that, you might've gone to your virtual networks to the DNS servers and then change it to custom and entered all of the IP addresses for your DNS hosts. And that will work but the expert way is to manage things centrally using the private DNS zone. Pick where you want to build it and then give it a fully qualified domain name. Now this isn't a internet registered name. This is just something inside your network, kind of like your AD domain name. And with that done, you got to go to the record sets and you can add a new one. And there's all different kinds of records here, but for right now, we just want a records for our DNS servers, which happen to be my domain controllers and their specific IP addresses. So once you've got them all added and any other rules that you want, go to the virtual network link and then add one of those, give it a name, pick your virtual network, and unfortunately, you'll have to do this one at a time. Then you wanna check this box for auto registration, which will add any other new VMs and other resources automatically, just like all your native DNS solutions. And once you're done, it'll look something like this. Back on the VNet side, take a look at your DNS servers and notice it's using the default Azure DNS. And that's cool because it lets you reach all of the Azure cloud services without any additional help. And the private zone is linked to the VNet, so it'll take care of everything else. Okay, so now name resolution will work across your global network, but how do we get there? Back in the VNet manager, we have a new config feature and that's for routing. And you should be an expert at this by now. Name, description, add a collection, give that a name and a description, pick your groups, and then we have the rules. And this just looks like Azure routing rules. So you give it a name, select your destination, for example, going from uh, the one hub and spoke in Europe over to the US. So just add the site or range where you wanna to get to, and then for the next hop, choose the virtual appliance. And then you can click this handy link to select from your firewalls, Pick the one that's in your source region, click add, and then repeat for the other regions. So now we've got a rule that takes us from the UK over to the US and Japan through our firewalls. And when you have your routing rules set, go back to the VNet manager, to the deployments, add a new deployment, pick your routing rule, pick your regions, and then click deploy. So now the traffic will go from the spokes to their own hubs, to their own firewalls, cross to the other firewalls, which means all your firewalls need to know how to send and forward that traffic. Then the traffic will go to that target hub, to that particular spoke, and then if the subnet NSG allows the traffic in and the VM's micro-segmentation NSG allows the traffic in, you're communicating. So now that you're well on your way to being a cloud network expert, your next expert journey starts right here and happy learning.